Hello everybody, welcome back to the Farming Simulator 25 Tips and Tricks video. Today we're going to continue our dive through all the various crops in Farm Sim 25 by taking a look at sorghum. Now I know some of you may be inclined to want to correct me on my pronunciation. Don't worry about it. I don't care. any rate, let's take a look first at the Farm Sim Academy infographic. This can be found at the FarmingSimulator.com website under their tutorial section. And this was created for Farm Sim 22. It's going to be mostly accurate. So let's just go ahead and take a look, see what it has to say. We're going to expect a yield of 8,200 liters per hectare. Now that's going to be a non-bonus yield. That's going to be a straight stock yield as if we didn't do any fertilization or any other field enhancements. We have an average selling price on easy of $1,290. And we're going to use an average of 200 liters of seed per hectare. Now, in our previous videos with other crops, we have seen the seed usage be off a bit. Seems like in FS25, we are using overall less seed than we did in FS22. Or at least less seed than all of these Academy infographics are saying that we would. We're going to have an average growing duration of four months. So if you are playing with the crop counter enabled or disabled, you can expect four months to have to pass before you're going to be able to go from seeded or planted to ready to harvest. We're going to be planting our crop in April and May timeframe. And as such, that means we're going to be harvesting in August and September. Now let's dive a little bit into the menus here and make sure all that information is going to pan out for FS25. Indeed, sorghum, we have April and May as our planting season. And then we are going to be August and September with respect to our harvest season if we have the growth calendar enabled. If we take a look at our prices screen, we have an average high price on Easy Economy of $1,104. So a bit under what it was saying the average high would be for FS22 and an average low of $780 per thousand liters on, again, Easy Economy. If you have normal or hard economy, these prices are going to be a bit lower. As far as where are we going to be able to sell our crop? Well, we're going to be able to sell at the farmer's market, the Goldcrest Valley train sell point, grain barge terminal one and two here on Riverbend Springs, as well as the grain mill and the grain river silo. Now, speaking of the grain mill, if we own the grain mill, we can bring our sorghum into the grain mill in order to process it into flour. And then, of course, flour could be then further processed at the bakery if we own that or sold at the bakery. And then if we do own the bakery, we're going to be able to make bread or cakes with that flour. Of course, if we make cakes, we also need to have sugar, milk, eggs, butter, and strawberries. Now, with the introduction of FS25, we also have the introduction of a new brand. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that one. I mean, gosh, if I can't even pronounce sorghum right, how am I going to get this? At any rate, this is a new specialty header exclusively for harvesting of sorghum, or also known as Milo. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the stuff in the vehicle shop. So with respect to the header that I just mentioned, it's going to be under combine harvesters and specialty headers. Here we have the Milo Star 1630, and it is exclusively for sorghum, AKA Milo, 12.3 meter working width and eight mile per hour working speed. That is the distinction with respect to this particular header. Now we are going to be doing a harvest test between that header and a traditional grain header. In fact, we're going to be using the Macdon FD250 Flex Draper that we have been using in our other videos. It has a 15.2 meter working width and a 6 mile per hour working speed. Now you may say to yourself, hey, this one's wider. So just because it's a little bit slower, it's wider. So it's all going to work out in the end. Maybe, maybe not. But that doesn't necessarily mean that's the particular header you're going to be able to use. Maybe you're using a header that's 10.7 meters or 18.13.8 or 7.6. Although honestly, if you're working down here at this size header, you're probably not going to be putting the Milo star on your harvester because your pipe probably isn't long enough to easily offload it with that big of a header. Now, speaking of harvesters, anything here in your combine harvesters is going to be able to harvest your sorghum or Milo 
for this particular video, we're using the Lexion 6900. Why? Because, well, because I want to. And because its pipe is gonna be long enough to easily unload even with that larger draper header. Now, as far as putting your seed in the ground, well, you're gonna need a planter. We're gonna find that here under the seeding category, under planters, and any of these planters are gonna be able to put your sorghum in the ground. We got the icon right there. For this particular video, we're gonna use the Optima RS. Why? Well, because I feel that it has a decent working width of nine meters for $89,500. And if you wanted to, you could also fertilize your crop at the same time you seed it. Now the field that we have prepared on this particular video already has the field fertilized. So we won't really need to put fertilizer in the ground at the same time we are seeding. But what we do have available also is, well, we're gonna need some seed in order to put into our planter. So we have a big bag pallet of seed. We have a big bag of seed and we have a pallet of seed bags. Now the seed bags are gonna have 50 liters more seed to them for the same price. So if you were a penny pincher or a, you know, maybe Scrooge, then you might wanna go with this particular pallet because you are gonna get a wee little bit more for your money. As far as your seed goes, you're gonna find that here under seeding, under category of seeds. Again, $1,260 for all three. First two are gonna hold a thousand liters. Meanwhile, the second one, 1,050. Or you can come down here to our objects category. And from here, we're gonna have big bags and we have our seed big bag. We have our big bag pallet. We have our seed option there. Then under pallets, we have our seed here as well. Let's jump in our dutes and uh, well, let's go ahead and load this harvester up and get to uh, putting our crop in the ground. Now this particular planter does not hold a whole lot of seed. It's only gonna hold 660 liters worth of seed, but for this particular size field, that won't be an issue whatsoever because well, we're using field 41 and field 41 on this map. Well, it is approximately one hectare in size. It may be just under one. If we take a look here at our farmland, it's 1.18. But of course the farmland isn't the full story. That our farmland extends a little bit to the south of our field, to a fence, a little bit to the north of our field, to the road, a little bit east and west to these kind of dirt access lanes. And there is a little bit of grass, as you can see, surrounding the field. Now, in addition to filling our cedar with seed and fertilizer, we're also gonna to want to change our cedar over to our planter, over to sorghum. So we're gonna use Y for that. There we go. Now we are ready to go. This planter also has another interesting trick. We have transport mode, which is the mode we were just in. We're gonna move it over here to work mode. So we're going to disconnect. We're going to connect here in the middle. And then we're going to hit X to fold it all up. And now we are in work mode. We're going to come over here to our field, which has already been prepared, which means that if it needed plowing, we've already plowed. If it needed lime, lime has been applied. We have also mulched the field and everything. So it is as ready to go as possible. We're gonna have a yield bonus of about 95% on this particular field. Off we go. And just for consistency sake, we are gonna use steering assist. Now I'm gonna go ahead and finish seeding this particular field then I'll come back and report to you what my overall seed usage was. So seed usage is way under what that infographic was reporting. Remember it said 200 liters per hectare. We have 626 liters left in our planter. We started with 660. And that basically means for that whole field, which is about one hectare in size, we used a total of 34 liters worth of seed. 34. That's it. 
So that is quite a reduction from what we saw in that infographic of 200. So that is really an interesting thing going on there. I'm going to go ahead and spray herbicide on this field uh, because it does have weeds growing. That way we can go ahead and take care of our weed problem. And then we will fast forward into May and basically take a look and see what our first stage growth looks like for this particular crop. Just like that, it's May and we have our first growth state on the field. 95% bonus is what we have on the field. And just like if you saw our soybean video, I really like the new crop textures here for sorghum. Let's go ahead and move forward some more time and see what the second growth state looks like. So here we have our second growth. And if you think to yourself, wow, this looks an awful lot like corn. Well, it, they kind of are in the same general family, I guess you could say. Except we have our, our crop, our grain is at the top of the plant as opposed to corn being on ears, you know, part way down. But here you go. Second growth state and we are in June. So just two months away from harvest. July and we have a third growth state. The plant isn't super tall still, but we do have our grain filling out at the top quite well. Let's move on into August and that's where we should see ready to harvest. And here we are with our ready to harvest state. Right, it's not as tall as corn by a large stretch. But you see we have our grain here on top of the plant. And just like we did when we did our MacDon testing, we're going to save the game here. And then I'm going to do a traditional harvest with a traditional header. We're going to document the crop that we have harvested. And then we're going to load the save game up and we're going to harvest with this header here. And let's see if there's any real differences aside from just general working speed. So we already talked about where you're going to be able to buy the harvester and both of these headers. Let's go ahead and start harvesting up here at the top of the field. Technically the southern edge of the field if you look at the PDA, but any rate because this will give us a ability to kind of turn around now this is really an interesting way of harvesting that we haven't really seen with our other grains to date and that is that the header is not all the way at the bottom of the ground it's not at its lowest position it's actually up a and held up such that it is collecting just the head of the crop. So you see we've left a fair bit of the plant on the field. If we come over here we can kind of see the height differential. And the reason this is happening is well the head of the plant right here right it's all at the top that's where all the grain is. Well if you're you're at the bottom and you are cutting this and bringing it into the header. It's it's pretty violent, right? It's got to cut it off. So you're shaking it at the bottom. And, you know, if you've ever shaken, let's say, a pool noodle, right? You know that the other end really starts whipping around. Um, so cutting and any movement at the bottom of the plant is really going to get the top of the plant whipping itself around and there's a pretty good risk of losing grain if you lower this header all the way down to the bottom of the ground so as such in the game it is basically emulating the way folks will harvest this with a traditional harvester and having the header raised in a higher position we're also tossing some chaff at the back 
So let's go ahead and check our soil state and see if we are getting a mulch state post harvest. And we are indeed. You can see if we toggle this, there we have our harvested area. And if we toggle it back, you can see that we are mulched before harvest and we are mulched post harvest, except for this little corner and area where we do not have the chaff being put on the ground yet. So you do not need to mulch after harvesting sorghum because the act of harvesting it will basically give you that mulched state. So I'll see you here in a brief moment or two once we get this fully harvested. And I'll update you as to basically what we got as far as a total harvest using our traditional harvest header. So now that we have finished harvesting based with our standard grain header, okay, we have 15,832 liters. If we compare that against the infographics 8,200 liters for a standard yield, well, we see we have a 93% bonus here. 93% has been fairly common across all of our videos with respect to what we're seeing when we have a 95% bonus on the field. So that's basically telling me that my field is just under one hectare in size, and that's why we see just sub 95% bonus when we had that on the field. Now, if we come over here and look, Okay, it says weed growing. Do you want to check something here? So no, we do not need to plow after harvesting our sorghum. That is going to come up in some other crops though. So that's important to understand. Now we're going to completely reset and use this Milo header to harvest and see if we get more than the 18, 000, or sorry, 15,832 liters. Because if we do, then this not only works faster, but actually gives us a better yield. If we don't, then it just really comes down to size and speed. And really, is it worth it then for the added cost of an additional header? Because this header is not cheap at $114,000. But if it gives you more crop and you're doing a lot of sorghum, then maybe it is worth it. So, I mean, kind of obviously this header looks an awful lot like a corn header. And I was checking out these animations. So we have little little feeders here, little, little grabbers. And when we turn the header on, Right, we see these little grabbers come out, and then we have a taper down to some cutting discs to cut the plant off. And then it feeds into the auger area where there's an auger, and then some feeders in order to kind of push it into the harvester. And then that's basically how the header works. So let's go ahead and make our way up here to again the top of the field. We lower our head down. You see this stops in that position. So it's already elevated. And just so we can maximize things, we'll enable steering assist. Snipping off the plant just above, or just below the head, and we're running at eight miles an hour, bringing it into the harvester. And then off we go. So I will report back once this is done, just seeing if we have more or about the same amount of 
harvest. So some interesting results with respect to our harvest using the specialty Milo header and that we have now a yield of 15,764 liters. Now that turns out to be just 68 liters short of what we had with the traditional header. And I don't really know why. Um, why it's short? Because basically it's the exact same field. We literally saved the game and then exited it and loaded it up and then harvested with the other header. So it should mathematically be the same. Now it's possible that... Oh, well look here. I guess that's why. <laughs> uh, I, I, yeah. I struggle sometimes with the uh, the steering assist. Like, it disengages. And I don't realize it's disengaged. And now, next thing you know, my thing is just driving off in the angle. So that's what happened here. That's why we short 60-some liters. So there you go. I was going to say, I don't know why, but, you know, kind of margin of error. And just chalk it up to that. But, well, no. User error. User error, indeed. So, we have now our harvest of sorghum. What can we do with it? Well, we can obviously sell it, and we've already talked about the sell point locations that we can take it to. We can store it because it's not a good time to sell sorghum right after you harvest it. So, you could put one of these silos down and store it. We have the single meridian bin. I'm going to have a dedicated video on using that particular silo later on in the channel, so keep an eye out for that. Or you could simply unload it to one of these other silos by taking your trailer over here and just dumping it in. Then there is an output pipe where we can then take our product out. Pretty straightforward. Just like that. And we could also run it through, like I mentioned earlier, the flour mill. So let's take a look at that and take a look kind of at the economy of the flour mill a little bit. Look at the economy of selling the grain by itself. So we're going to come here to the grain mill or flour mill, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to dump this product in. Now, while we're dumping the product in, let's look at our prices screen and let's revisit sorghum. Average high of $15.63 this time. Hmm. That's a bit different than what we had in the previous load up. Average low of $1,014. So that's a little bit, that's a little bit better. And that's a little bit more in line with the prices that we were seeing on the infographic from FS22. Let's look at our flour. 2430 or 1606. So about $900 more on the high end and what well, was about $600 more on the low end. Well, let's look at our production here. So 15 units of sorghum go in, 13 units of flour come out. So what is that ratio? So 86%, we get out 86% of what we put in, okay? So if we put in 15,764 liters worth of grain, we're going to get 13,662 liters worth of flour out. Now, we get flour in 1,000 liter pallets, so we're going to have 13 pallets and then two-thirds of a pallet unused. So, we just don't worry about the two-thirds of a pallet. Let's come back over here to our prices screen. And if we sell 13 pallets at the best price listed of $24.30, that's $31,590. If we just take our sorghum, make it into flour, and then sell it at the best time possible. If we take our sorghum and just raw, flat out, sell it at the best time possible, 
well, 15,764 times, sorry, 15.764, because remember all these prices are per thousand liters. So 15 times 15.63, that's $24,639 if we just sell the grain directly. So converting it to flour is, is a better deal. Now we can also use our sorghum on some of our animals, okay? So our horses are gonna be good with sorghum. Our chickens, I believe, are gonna be good with sorghum as well. And our pigs, I believe, are gonna be good with sorghum as well. Go check out those specific animal videos just to be sure that I am remembering correctly, but we could use that also as a form of animal feed. But what if we took our flour and refined that further into bread? Well, if we took those 13 pallets of flour and brought them over here to our bread, 90 flour, 45 bread. So what is that mathematically? That is half. And I should have known that. So if we put 13 pallets of flour in, we're going to get six and a half pallets of flour out. Basically, or six and a half pallets of bread out. So basically, six. So let's come back here to our prices. And let's take a look real quick at our bread. And our bread is a lot more valuable. 58.32 high, 4,059 low. So if we take our six pallets of bread times 5,832, 34,992. So if we come back here and look at our flour, 31,590, or selling the grain directly, 24,639. You kind of decide maybe what you would prefer to see and prefer to do. Um, but it's pretty obvious that you are going to get more for your money if you do already own the grain mill to process your grain at the grain mill for flour. If you already own the bakery, then take that and process it into bread, and you're going to get more money than if you just sold the grain directly. How many loaves of bread would you have to sell in order to make buying the flour mill and the bakery worthwhile? Well, that's, I'll leave that up to you to decide because the grain mill is $288,000 if you have to place it. The bakery, well, it is gonna be $150,000 to place if you have to place it. And depending on the map, it may be those prices to buy them or they may be different prices. So it will depend on what map you are playing on. And that's going to be it. That's going to wrap up our video here on sorghum. I hope you all enjoyed it. And I hope it was useful and informative in some way. If you know someone that is looking to get into Farming Simulator 25. Or someone who already has Farm Sim 25. And just is maybe struggling with what crops to do. Or maybe what to do with things in general. Then please share this video. Share this playlist the tips and tricks playlist because we are going to be marching through all of the crops in farm sim 25 we've already marched through all of the animals as well as several features within the build mode and other functions as far as buildable buildings construction missions etc we're going to have a plethora of video on or information on farm sim 25 in the very near future and until next time happy farming